The difference between success and failure in the stock market has nothing to do with your skill set. It has everything to do with your mindset. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer and Mentor for T3 Live. I'd like to invite you to an exclusive trading education event in Charlotte, North Carolina on Saturday, March 16th. Attendees will learn what we believe to be the five biggest mistakes that plague the average trader and how to overcome them with a specific focus on trading psychology and risk management. Reserve your seat at t3live.com or call the number below. I look forward to seeing you there. Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So here we are. Everyone's gonna go home. You're gonna go, uh, your parents might call you, your uncle, your aunt, your nephew. Oh my goodness, you must have made a fortune. Stock market Dow Jones all time highs. They're printing money, it's that easy. And then you're probably gonna roll your eyes and be like, yeah, today was a good day, or oh, today could have been a better day, or you know, these, everyone has no idea you know, what it's like to be in the trenches as a trader um, who, you know, really kind of, you know, makes his, uh, his, you know, puts his day together or his week together or his month together. And I, I will let you know that I am that guy with you. I understand. I understand when you think you've left too much money on the table. I understand when you get out too early. I understand when things look like they might not hold in there and you get out or you press shorts. I understand all these things. Okay, I understand, you know, strong stocks that are hard to buy the pullback because you think they're going to pull back further. I understand playing laggard stocks that you think you're going to play catch up that really never do and you know you shouldn't. I, again, I understand all these things. You know why? Because I've been doing this for 13 to 15 years. And a lot of you guys have seen me in the media here and there, whether it was on CNBC, Bloomberg, whatever it is. And even recently in the last year or two, I've been pounding the table, S&P, you know what, 1700 by 2015, it seems like it's gonna happen sooner than later. But you also know that, you know, having a, a game plan and having a road to your destination is different than traveling it. And at times, it's, it's you know, you got high five guys on your desk. At times, you're in eight, 12 longs that are working out well, trading through highs, you're getting momentum, you're adding tears. And sometimes, market goes up and you're like, holy cow, I wanna be long and I'm not making a dime. It happens. So with all that being said, it's Friday. You gotta roll your shoulders back a little bit and say, okay, here we are. It is, uh, what, what are we, we're in January, February, we're in March. It's <laughs> still a lot of year left. There's a lot more gains to be had. There's a lot more corrections to be had. There's a lot more breakouts that are gonna take place. There's a lot of things to do that if you have too much frustration, you let too many things get to you, like I see in the community or I see in the Twitter sphere or I see around you, you're never going to have the clarity to, to look through it. So at this point, every headline is going to read uh, Dow all-time highs, uh, S&P, you know, monthly, yearly highs. And it's going to attract attention to the market. Guys that have been flushed out, guys that had wanted nothing to do with it. And for you, you got to be a little excited about that because you've learned how to deal with the day-to-day. -day. You've learned how to embrace volatility. You've learned how to find relative strength. You've learned how to use a tier system. You've learned how to how to play breakouts, all things that people who have not been in the stock market for the past five years or decade, and they just say, I want in somehow, don't know how to do. So you always could find the positive from a negative. And it's always better just to be glass half full versus half empty and trade what you see, not what you know. And I will say, I'm looking right into the camera. I don't have a damn teleprompter. Okay, I'm telling you like it is as a trader in the trenches, as someone who's been making big calls, small calls, bad calls, realistic calls, you, know, you name it, I'm there and I'm there with you. And you know, at this point, I'm not gonna rant anymore. I'm just gonna roll through 30 stocks that come off my head that I, people have asked me about in the course of the past probably four hours and just tell you what I think real quickly, what it looks like and you know, where there could be some opportunities and whether it's worth your time. So I'm just gonna roll through it as if I had a co-host. Do I have a co-host? No, no co-host. Oh, maybe he's over here. No co-host over here. I'm just gonna do it myself. And first things first, let's take a quick look at the SPX. Here's the SPX. There you go. Here was your breakout above 1530. Now we close at 1551. Here is when we broke that extending channel to the downside where you had that red dog reversal that came back up, held higher and went. 
Here's your monthly chart in the SPX. SPX, look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Coming back to a double top. What's going to happen here? Are we going to get a little bit of selling pressure because people are going to finally say I'm going to get out of the way? Or are we going to push through, squeeze every damn short out there, rolling it up, and then fail or push through, squeeze every damn short, and get to my 1700 price target a lot quicker than I thought in 2015? You know what? We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So in technology, we all know we've been talking about the leaders, opportunities, how to ride it, whether they hold the 8-day, the 21-day, whether they're breaking out, whether they need time. So we're going to roll right through. First one, strongest stock, Google. You know, finally, let's go to the, I'm just going to go to daily charts because that's what we typically trade off of. Here's your Google daily chart. Here's the gap up on earnings. Here's where it took out last year's high. Here's the 8-day it's been following. Today, it broke below the pivot that I talked about, that 828.90. Some guys made a little cute money short. Other guys probably positioned in. And there you go. Another bull flag question is, kind of take this out next week. Stay tuned. LinkedIn, also best in breed. Okay, look at this move from the earnings. Here's your bull flag. There's your break above. Continuation, sideways flag. Looked good today. Um, kind of continued to the upside. Here's another bull flag. Look at this, you know. Uh, base on base move, flag on flag move. Here we go again. Your next pivot in LinkedIn is 179.35. Next trade, Netflix. Downgraded two days ago on fast money. Everyone said game over. Looks like Netflix doesn't think so. Gap up on earnings, bull flag, continuation, wide range bar, holding support. Came to the 21 day, perked up the last two days. This was the day it was downgraded, held support. So I would say next week we're going to look to see what happens here. Breaks above 185.50, chances are it can come back to the highs here, 197 and change. Stay tuned. Amazon, not quite the leader, but still acting okay. Last nice trade, 267. Here's your bull flag going sideways, holding above the eight-day moving average. I would say active traders are going to be all over this if it can get above 276 and a half next week and then all of a sudden you have historic highs and you look at this run that everyone's been naysaying you know because of valuation and if you've been in you know amazon congratulations you're a better man than me but all in all next week that could be a setup here you go 276 68 it could continue then you also had ebay ebay actually let's go to yahoo first yahoo's been best in breed very strong you know you talk about the breakout above 1660 nice channel going sideways here's your core trade lots of trades along the way last time we talked about it 2145 pow now what's going on up here another choppy but higher level consolidation right here's your yahoo going sideways gets above this uh 2309 can continue so we'll see what happens here's your support here's the eight day catching up so even in the strongest environments you're going to see I'm going to go through a lot of leading stocks. Markets need time for the eight day to catch up. Doesn't mean it's over. Doesn't mean it's time to get, you know, all, you know, all out of your stocks. Doesn't mean get net short. It means have a little patience. You don't have the right setup. Wait. So anyway, you know, recently there's been some pressure in certain stocks. eBay been pressured. Finally today, small red dog reversal. People are asking me about it. Okay. As far as, you know, being a leader, it, it has been. It did break this trend line. Here was your high. This was one level to get out if you were quick and nimble. And then here was another level. And now today you had a small red dog reversal through the low. You know, I would say B minus trade. If you sold it here or you sold it there, maybe you try it again. eBay to me has a lot to prove. Facebook, stock we've talked about this week it was on Kramer's show. Still taking time. You know, here's your big cup and handle pattern. Here is where it was getting nice and tight. And yes, would I have loved it to, to get to, to 29? Would I have loved it to get above this resistance area today? I would have, and it didn't happen. Okay, here is your red dog reversal. This is when I traded below 2063, came back up. This is when I got back involved in it. You know, it's been under pressure since earnings. Yesterday, I did add a 2810. And then today, you know, it probably gave back a little bit more. Okay, I'm down to tier one. So I took off what I added, and I'm going to wait. If it starts getting above this resistance, I'll get back into bigger size. If not, I'm going to give it to, like I said on the show right here, if you're not as enamored with it or you, you, know, and you think that it could break this ascending trend line, which it might, and it gets below, I would say give it to uh, you know, really 2730. 2730 has been holding. If it starts to break 2730 and, you, and you're you know, a little upset or worried about it, get out of the way. 
That's fine. Who knows how much time this thing needs? You know how many times LinkedIn you know, was wishy-washy at, at a certain point of, of its uh, channel here. So at this point, I still think the highs of the year aren't in, traded on your own time frame. As far as LinkedIn, you know how long it took to stay in this channel before breaking out? You know how many times you had came up to the highs, back lower, channeled, went back lower, came back to the ties, fell, and finally went? So it happens. So either give it a lot of room as far as Facebook, or you can micromanage it. But at this point, I do think there's going to be traction at some point. Just know that if you add too much at the wrong time, you're going to have to sit through. And right now, who knows? So I would stay with some, and this is your pivot. You know, let's see, maybe next week it acts a little bit better and you can get some momentum. You have to know whether or not you're trading it from a macro stance, if you come back to me, an intermediate stance, or if you're looking for momentum. And today there was no momentum. I would have loved it to have been above 29. Didn't happen. Okay, as far as Apple, stock has been in a downtrend. It's been trapped. I don't understand where the hell Timmy Cook is doing or where he's at. Wake, wake, wake up. Come on. Investors need you to put some type of catalyst on the table. And I think that's the problem with traders like me right now. You know, I didn't get caught in the big downtrend. And yes, I've had some paper cuts along the way, testing moving averages, testing support, measuring commitment. But we've caught some nice, you know, trades in, in the mix that one of them lasted for like 60, 80 points. The last one two weeks ago from 448 to 480. So there's been some nice trades there. But I think we're all thinking that we don't want to miss the morning. We come in and they announce a big dividend and they announce a big buyback. And, and there's a nice overnight move because, you know, if you miss the overnight move, <laughs> lately you try and buy a dip and it turns into a disaster. You look at the chart of Apple, still very weak. Okay, if you look here, head and shoulders top right there, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, here is your neckline. I do remember saying when we break the 21 day, that's the first time I did it all the way back from the previous earnings. Get out of the way. It's a trade for me, not a swing trade, tactical. It could test the 50, test the 50, bounced off it and broke. Tested the trend line right here, bounced off it and broke. This was a nice trade. Red Dog Reversal took you up to this, you know, resistance. Came right back down. Another nice little trade. Remember this to start the year. Here's your, uh, you know, engulfing move. Went to resistance, failed, and then this is where we are right now. This was your last nice trade that we caught from about, what was that, you know, 448 to fill this gap. And here we are right now. And I know that there's some pressure because I have some pressure too. I lost money in Apple today. And I, I'm always thinking or I'm trying to think that at some point, this, you know, there are two different downtrends now. You have a downtrend that could be broken for a nice juicy trade if it were to get above 435. And then you have a bigger downtrend that's been in place that if you've been shorting it every time it comes here, you would probably say, oh, time for it to cover. Maybe it goes up to 475 or 540. And that's around here. But again, if it doesn't take place, you got to go all the way back and, and see that, you know, you have bigger support down here well into the 300s. Okay, this has been in control. And if you've been shorting it the whole way down, congratulations. Something I'm not good at. I've been trying to play some bounces along the way, having some success, but sometimes, you know, it just hasn't been um, <laughs> the, the best trade and it's been a little bit frustrating. So at this point, um, I would just be careful with your Apple. We've talked about it having to prove itself and just, you know, stay the course. Or, I mean, oh, being away <laughs> is staying the course until it shows you it's more than a rental or more than just a trade. Okay, you go to the banks. The banks had an enormous run. We started talking about Bank of America, $8 in August on Bloomberg. Then again in $9.95 and, you know, P.S., uh, even the dip last week around 11.30 went back above 12. And then the banks had their stress test and they sold the news for now. You have another stress test coming out by the, by the Fed next week. Who knows how it'll deal with it then? You know, you go quickly through the banks. You got Goldman Sachs. Okay, he was at an ascending channel, was following, broke held, gave you a nice trade, and then today, you know, came back and retested that. So we'll see what happens with Goldman. It's a little wishy-washy, but overall still looks okay. Morgan and I tried to play for a catch-up trade and uh, didn't work. Okay, it's still hanging around, but overall, you know, we caught a little trade yesterday, and then today you could have salvaged it a little bit. At this point, still a laggard. JP Morgan went above 50. You know, it, you know, had a nice breakout move, one of the first major, major um, banks to, to do so. Held in pretty well, still looks good. BLK talked about it also earlier in the week. It you know showed power, um, holding higher still looks good. CIT was a nice little treat for us this week. If you remember, we put it on off the charts right around here. I think I got long it two days ago. This is when you could have bought more, and then 
Today I sold some because I just wanted to pare down a little bit. So the bank's still at good. Even Bank of America, I do think that this one, as ugly as this bar looks, I don't care. I think at some point I'd love to be a buyer a little bit closer to 1178. Last time we had a nice little core trade was right around here in 995. And then here was your bull flag and blah. There you go. And then this has been your sideways consolidation, kind of like what happened down here. So I don't know how much time I've already uh, rambled on for, but I'm going to go a little bit longer. If, if you don't want to tune in anymore, you know what? Go ahead for your weekend. Let's talk about gold because a lot of people have had a lot of opinions on gold. What's it going to do? If you remember that triangle at 161, that was that intermediate trend line that it broke to the downside. I was cheating to the upside, got stopped out. Some guys got short. Now it's trying to hold macro support. Here is the high here back in that October, lower high, lower high. Here is that triangle broke below. And now it's trying to hold this macro support. Um, if I were a gold bug and looking to stay with it, better make sure that it holds this 148 to 150. So be careful there. GDX, I could actually a cute little trade there. Um, it's been battered and bruised, but gave you a, a, some decent action. Here is that reversal. Okay, uh, what, three days ago? I think I sold some into the up open yesterday. Now it's holding. See if it can continue to hold versus this and, and maybe continue. Maybe that'll give you uh, some relief in, in this area. But it's been a, a laggard, crazy group and more of a short than a long. You look at the TBT. Look at this move. Finally, boom. In my 2013 thesis, said be long the TBT. But you know what? For me, it's been hard to buy. It's been hard to stick with. It's been very erratic. But you know what it did today? It cleared a pretty big level. So now if you take my you know, swing trading course, you know that you want to trade versus gaps. The longer it holds this gap and goes sideways, the, the, the higher it could potentially go. Um, as far as the IYT, the transports, you know, still holding this level, flagging again after a nice breakout. XLI, the industrials, look at that. Not even waiting, not even flagging at highs, leading the way. The AGs have been weaker. See what that's doing. It's coming back up to resistance. I really wouldn't pay too much attention there. So here we are. Come back to me. Uh, I'm just trying to rattle through names, rattle through uh, strategic type of setups. And, and I just want you guys to realize that try not to have opinions. Try and follow the money. Try and use the tier system. Try and you know, be involved. Use your time frame. You know, not everyone hates the stock market. I know my wife. I've talked about her on the virtual trade floor. She's 30. How old is my wife? 36. She's been working since, you know, for six years, since 2007. There are people that have a 401k that have been investing money every single month that are up a lot. Not everyone's a baby boomer that, you know, that refinanced their house three times and had to hit out their, their, you know, their, their 401k or their IRA when they shouldn't have at the bottom and hate the stock market. You know, I, I think it's kind of, um, what's the word, constructive that when we, the Dow hit, all-time highs early this week. There wasn't a big media mob around the, the, you know, the New York Stock Exchange. I went to the gym. I go to Equinox over there. That's where I have my suit. That's where I get dressed up to go on TV, whatever. Nobody was there. Nobody cares. So it's not like sediments all like, okay, all in. We're all bulls. There's still a lot of skepticism. So that means it can continue. Every headline you read is like, what's going to derail the market? You know, Rubini last night was like, uh, wait till later this year. We're going to get shock and awe or whatever he said. Okay, what about from now till then? Wait till things change. Okay, don't oversmart yourself or outsmart yourself or whatever it's called. Do what you do well and work on it. Look at what you do poorly at and work on that too. There's a lot of improvement we all can make and none of us are where we want to be. But if you don't take accountability and you don't take the steps in the right direction to change, you're never going to get where you want to go. So if you're you know, thinking that life's great and you, and you made a lot of money this week, you've been riding the trend, just make sure you don't get ahead of yourself either. Don't let your highs get too high. Don't let your lows get too low. Even keel. But you deserve to kick back and have a drink and high five your wife or your husband or your kids and say, you know what, honey, I, I've you know, done very well because I've been following a trend. I've been learning my, my discipline and I've been making some progress. So you're allowed to do that too. So everyone's going to be doing something this weekend. Only you know where your head's at, how you're feeling, and, and what you have to do to put yourself in either a better spot or keep yourself moving along as we go forward because, again, it's March. It's a long year ahead of us, and it's only you who's going to be able to put yourself in the right position to benefit from the rest of the trading activity this year, next year, the year after, the year after, because it always changes, and you have to have your, you know, your visibility up so you can see it 
and the way you see things is by being objective, not by having opinions and letting the market come to you. You trade what you see, not what you think. And um, my name is Scott Redler, T3 Live. This was your recap. Have an unbelievable weekend. See you Monday morning with Brittany. Looking forward to it, but I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's been a long week, and it's been a good one. So hopefully it's been good for you as well. Have a great night.